Imagine that former President Trump wants to travel from New York to Las Vegas. How would he get there? Will he be using Air Force One? Will he charter a plane? Will he book a commercial flight and fly with the common people? Or maybe he'll send his own Trump Force One to get him. What if the ex-POTUS isn't a billionaire like Trump? In other words, how do former presidents travel around? Well, first of all, when it comes to ground transportation, they're not allowed to drive. Before 2012, ex-presidents were given secret service agents to protect them for 10 years after they left office. However, with the Former Presidents Act of 2012, this changed. Now, former President George W. Bush and all the other presidents after him will be protected by the Secret Service until their death. And this includes the president's spouse. And if you think that the president will take their $219,000 annual pension to buy a car and drive themselves around with the Secret Service agents in the back sending selfies to their friends on IG, you'd be wrong. You see, after John F. Kennedy was assassinated on the street, the government made it a rule for former presidents to never drive themselves ever again. A Secret Service agent is required to chauffeur former presidents with a ride being paid for. The vehicle needs to be big enough to fit the president, their family, and the Secret Service agents, so you could think of this as a mini motorcade. The driver chauffeuring them around has to be specially trained in evasive maneuvers in case something happens on the road while they're traveling. Lyndon B. Johnson, who left office in 1969, was the last U.S. president that drove himself around. Some presidents, such as Barack Obama and George W. Bush, weren't used to being chauffeured around before becoming president. Donald Trump, the 45th president of the United States, had a chauffeur long before he assumed office. For Bill Clinton, this was a bit of a letdown because he liked driving. However, the law states that the president must smash that like button just like you should if you haven't done so already. But no, in all seriousness, the law states that the president is prohibited from driving on open roads, only on private estates. That's why former President Bill Clinton can only use a golf cart to drive himself on the course. Whenever he needs to use a car on the road, the car will be driven by a Secret Service agent. All these rules are in place for safety purposes, because they need to protect the people who are privy to more government secrets than any other public servant. There are anecdotes from the past where the security rules were not as strict, like the time President Truman got out of his car and helped a lady corral her pigs after seeing her struggle to do it. We wonder what Bill Clinton and George W. Bush would do. But what if the former presidents want to travel overseas? Well, when air travel is involved for leisure purposes, vacation and family trips, then the former presidents have to pay the travel costs. But there is a problem. Sure, those $219,000 come in handy once the president is out of office, but they can't really book commercial planes, it's just not viable. Think of the traffic jams the Obamas would cause at LAX or New York's JFK International Airport if they were to board a flight with everyone else. And a lot of people trying to take photos of and with the ex-president and their family something you really don't want to have at an airport. That's why most of the time, they'd have to charter a private jet. For example, after President Obama left office, Michelle Obama was seen getting on board the Falcon 900EX private jet owned by Richard Branson, the founder of Virgin Atlantic. She was supposedly headed to a Necker Island vacation located in the British Virgin Islands. Since former presidents can no longer fly on Air Force One, the Flying Fortress, they needed to find other non-commercial ways to travel abroad. Interestingly enough, Barack Obama couldn't be seen boarding the same jet with his wife, However, he traveled to Necker Island too, and we can confidently say he did not fly commercial. But what if they have to travel for some speaking engagement to promote the US and speak as the former president of the country? Well, in that case, the government has them covered. Well, it's more like the taxpayer has them covered, but still, the important thing is that they're covered. Let us explain. The Former Presidents Act of 1958 clearly states that certain funds would be allocated to former U.S. presidents for travel when the travel is related to the former position. In other words, if the ex-POTUS is scheduled to speak at an event representing the U.S., the travel costs would be covered. In 1969, the GSA of the General Services Association was in charge of determining the annual funds that would be given to ex-presidents, their family, and two staff members. They set this funding to $1 million for the president and $500,000 for their spouse. However, the ex-POTUS and spouse don't get the money in their bank account. The government determines whether the purpose of the traveling arrangement is for leisure or government-related work, 
If the ex-POTUS and their family are going on vacation, then they won't receive any funding. If it's the latter, then the government would pay for the trip or trips given travel costs don't exceed $1.5 million per year. Now, before you start fuming that so much money is being allocated to former presidents, we'd like to point out that in 2015, only George W. Bush and his father used some of this funding, and even that was for a measly $66,000. The other presidents didn't use their funds at all. Speaking of the Bush family, we'd like to point out that George W. Bush smashed that subscribe button and ring that notification bell. But no, in all seriousness, we'd point out that he was involved in a private jet incident in 2013. In the middle of the flight, the crew reported smoke on board and had to make an emergency landing. George W. Bush received some harsh reprimand by the public when he accepted $100,000 as a speaking fee to attend, get this, a veterans event and to make matters worse, when he accepted a $20,000 private jet flight, the public attacked him for doing so. Now, there is one ex-president still alive that's the exception to this rule. That man's name is ex-president Jimmy Carter. Did you know that both he and his wife Roslyn booked a Delta flight from their hometown of Atlanta to Washington, D.C. to attend the inauguration of former President Donald Trump? Speaking of ex-president Trump, He's probably the only person that doesn't have to inconvenience himself when traveling by plane. Even before he was flying on board Air Force One, he used his private Boeing 757, which had golden belt buckles, his own brand of water, and an interior just as luxurious as the one aboard Air Force One. Trump, Melania, their son Barron, and some other members of the Trump family got on board Marine One, the presidential helicopter, just before the inauguration of the 46th POTUS Joe Biden. They were taken to Joint Base Andrews, where they boarded the military-grade Boeing 747 or Air Force One for the last time and flew to Florida. The couple said they planned to stay at Mar-a-Lago, their private villa in West Palm Beach, Florida. Now, Trump will still be chauffeured around by the Secret Service, but when it comes to chartering private jets, he doesn't really have to do any of that. He could just board his private Boeing 757 along with his entire family and the Secret Service agents assigned to him and fly anywhere they want. After all, the plane was sitting at an airport in New York and will probably become the preferred method of transport for Trump and his family. Although we have heard some rumors that the plane needs to undergo major repairs to be operational. Now, compare that with the Carters. They're probably still collecting their Delta Sky Miles while former presidents like Bill Clinton, Barack Obama, George W. Bush, and Trump are almost never seen in public. They always travel private, which has made some people angry. Why would people be angry that the ex-presidents are chartering planes? Well, it's because they're chartering those planes with taxpayer dollars. They keep taking money from the government to travel around the country all while making hundreds of thousands of dollars, even millions of dollars every year from speaking engagements, book deals, and merchandise. The people make the argument that the FPA was put in place to maintain the dignity of the office of the president. However, we should point out that this was enacted after President Truman left office so poor he had to move in with his in-laws. The man couldn't even buy his own house. But that's not the case with presidents nowadays. So what do you think about presidents chartering jets? Bye for now.